Hi everyone, this is a, another tutorial, this time for percussion fig and the score manager that we'll be using quite a bit with the percussion fig today. Alright, so when we're writing for percussion, uh, I went through the normal setup wizard and it gave me this one I chose to just do two percussion, but maybe just to uh, give you a visual on that, I went to create new ensemble. I went down to percussion, went to percussion gear, and I added two of those. There are a whole bunch of other options we have. These are oftentimes one line percussion. And you might find that helpful if you're just writing for one percussion player who's going to stay on the triangle the entire time or the tambourine and so forth, or who's, you know, just playing a snare drum or something like that under the drums. Um, but in this case, we want our percussionists to play multiple instruments. So I would just go next and go through this whole process and click finish, but I already have mine ready. So what I want to do here is get all the instruments that I want here in an appropriate place. So you'll notice as I go up and down that there are already notes assigned for all these different lines on our percussion staff, right? And generally speaking, we're thinking about drums on spaces. If you think about the higher up we're going, they're thinking about higher frequencies, not exact pitch, obviously. But generally speaking, we still think of down being lower and up being higher. So here's a bass drum. Here's a snare drum. You'll hear there are some sound effects with them. It has a gong on there, a uh, tam-tam. There's some options that we have here that are all put in here as presets. And you'll find most of what you want in a very basic situation right here. Now, it might seem like there must be some standards. And there are some standards on where these percussion instruments go. It is quite often that we have a bass drum here, a snare drum here, uh, cymbals up on top. Those are all very standard things that we have. However, as we've been going through all of these, you might have noticed um, there are multiple instruments that come up on each of these lines or spaces. And it is important for us to specify all of these. So what I like to do is I go to the MF, the expression tool right here. What I want to do is create a new category for all of these. I'm going to go to Edit Categories. I'm going to go to Technique Text and Duplicate This. I'm going to call this Percussion names or something of that nature. All right, I'm going to create a percussion name for everything I want to use in my piece of music. So I'm going to use a bass drum. I'm going to use a snare drum. I'm going to use a suspended cymbal. And also, let's put in a few more. Let's have a triangle. And let's have a, um, we're going to have actually some uh, mallet instruments in a moment, so we'll have chimes and vibraphones that we're going to throw in here. And then let's put in a tambourine and a shaker, and I think that's what we'll be doing. Um, but maybe for some fun, let's just throw in a rain stick and a cowbell. Okay, so we have a variety of instruments we'll be using here. So our bass drum is the one we have in the first measure. And what I'll do is I will assign it right there. So I got a bass drum here. We'll get the uh, snare drum in next. And then I had a suspended cymbal up here at the top. And sorry about my mouse. This is a little bit of a slower computer than I normally use, but that is life. Okay, so great. Now one of the ones I wanted to have was a tambourine. So let's go through, look for that tambourine. Oh, there's the triangle. We do have that. Throw that in there. Now as I go through this all, I'm looking for that tambourine, and I don't see a tambourine anywhere. So that's not good. Um, what do I do? Well, this is where things get a little bit fun. 
Let's do this triangle really quickly. And here we go. Let's go add a tambourine and some of those other instruments into our mix. So where I went was Windows to Score Manager. Again, uh, Windows, the very top one right here, Control K is a fast way to get there, Command K. In the Score Manager, you'll see that we have two percussion staves. It doesn't matter which one I click on. It's more about getting to, when I click Settings, this percussion layout selection. So your basic percussion staff that we clicked on, this five-line staff, is assigned to basic orchestral percussion. There's another one called orchestral percussion here as well. And if I go to edit, I'll have a variety of options here. Now you'll notice that I have a lot right here in this. Um, and that's because this box is unchecked. If that box is checked, it only gives me so many options here. So I'm going to uncheck this box and go look for some of those other instruments I have here. Um, and you'll notice that we have a lot of different options, right? In fact, I saw some of the ones we want. Uh, what I'm going to do, now that I've seen that those exist, I'm going to add in a few spaces here where I can put them in. So, going over here looking for them, I can find my auxiliaries where a lot of them are. Well, I need a cowbell. You'll notice there's a lot of different options. and uh, I can put a cowbell in right here and say, well, where do I want my cowbell to be? Well, one of the places that's not being used yet perhaps would be like this line right here. I'm pretty sure I'm not using at this point. And I can actually go, if I want to use a muted cowbell, I can go and do a second one right here. Now, this cowbell right here, if it's open, it's going to be a normal note head. If it's muted, I'm going to use a different type of note head. Now, Finale has a billion note heads in here, but you can simplify it right now by just putting an X. And you'll notice there's different types of Xs for different things. You can decide how you want to do it. Um, you might want to distinguish between a half and a normal one, and you can decide of which these note heads that you feel is the best for that kind of thing. Um, and there are several different ways of people thinking about this. So this one kind of gives you an interesting one where you have this as a half one. You can hear see the lines right there that make it a whole. So let's try that. That might be an interesting way to go. Um, but I will say there are a lot of people who go with the option that we saw there. Some people go with that kind of circle around it as another option for a half note, just so you know. But for this, I'm going to just do something along these lines, maybe. Um, if I wanted to have another opinion on this, I can go to what the default is for one of my others if I happen to have one. There we go. So you can see that the triangle is using this system right here. And maybe if we want to model ourselves after the triangle is already inputted, that might be another option. If you notice, there's those note heads. Um, we could do that as well as an option. And we can just look for those note heads. Again, I push X in the search menu, and then I can look around for those. Aha, there they are. So if I want to play the same game that our triangle is playing with them, then I can just simply go to these ones, which are down a little bit in our menu. Um, yeah. So. Great, so that should look pretty similar to the triangle one. But again, you can make your own. I like the other one, it's kind of cool, but you just choose whatever makes sense to you. So this would match the triangle, so maybe that's a good idea for my cowbell that is muted. Now I also had a tambourine. And there's several different options I have here. I could do something where I have multiple notes right here for those different sounds, or I can just decide it's only going to have one sound the entire time. Maybe I'll put my tambourine up a bit higher than the cowbell like that. 
And again, it really doesn't matter necessarily where all of these go, but there are some conventions that you can look after and find. So now I have a rain stick and a shaker. So let's find our rain stick. And as we look for this, There it is. I have like all sorts of random things in here. And by the way, if you don't find one, you just kind of have to look for the closest option to it. So maybe this one can be like below the staff. It's just kind of a lower type of sound in a sense. Um, so if you don't have one, which we do have all of these instruments right now. And let's put this maybe right in the center. And maybe we can be more consistent. We can say all the noisy sounds um, could be that are not drums. We can put those on lines while well, we have the drums mostly on the spaces or something like that. That could be something we could do to make some sense out of all of this. Do whatever is going to make sense to you and more importantly to your performer. Um, but if you don't find one of them, I would just choose the sound that's the closest to what you want because nobody's going to actually see the labels until you create your own labels for them. Um, but now that I've put those all in, you'll notice that I have several options here. There's my cowbell. There's my tambourine. And there's a rain stick. And I think I just saw that maybe I didn't assign my shaker. Or no, there it is. There's my shaker. So I would just label all of these when you get to playing them. Okay. So cowbell. Tambourine. Brain stick. And shaker. And it's important to label these every time they come in. And that sounds like a little bit too much, but it actually is what you need to do is always label these every single time the person plays one of those notes, because they might be playing in a concert where the percussionists have different things. Maybe in some piece, the shaker is here and other piece of the shaker is in another place. Unfortunately, there's no standardized way of where you put all of these different instruments because there's just a different set of them all the time. So what I would do is uh, always label, always label, just help them know where all these things are. Um, if they don't play the right instrument at the right time, it's kind of on you. Uh, so you're giving them a whole new map, a whole new world of playing these things. So please always label whenever they come in. So even if I have my bass drum come in later, it should say bass drum over it again. Obviously not every note, but like every single time there's an entrance of that idea. And if you're having them play two instruments at once, for example, the snare and the suspended cymbal, you only need to label those once um, at the starting of that passage. OK? Now, what if you want to use other instruments, like the mallet instruments? Well, what we want to do is actually change our instruments. So I'm going to highlight over the measure we want that to be changed in. Go to Utilities, go to Change Instrument. And here we can change to Pitched Percussion. So we have the timpani, the mallets, the bells, the chimes, and we chimes is one of the ones we want to do. <clears throat> and it'll give us a clef. If I want to change it back, all I have to do is go back up to utilities, change instrument, and go back to the percussion, which will usually be already selected for you to go back. And as we were talking about before, don't make an assumption they know what instrument this is. Instead, go and label it Label all of the instruments for them. Make it easy for them to know what you're doing. So one other thing that can happen in the music is you can have some time, maybe several measures, where nothing is being played. And you want them to do an instrument change in this time, right? Well, first off, one thing I didn't show you earlier is if you right-click and go to multi-measure rest and create one. And that's really helpful. It's looking kind of squished here, but it looks something like that probably in a normal piece of music. Um, if you're having a part like this, it's sometimes helpful before that multi-measure rest to tell the percussionist where to go. So what I like to do is, in addition to all those, whenever I need one, 
if there is some time that they are going to need to get to somewhere, they need to change mallets or something, and they need that warning, I will tell them, go to chimes, or honestly, what I normally do is just get rid of the word go, and say two chimes. Um, and that helps them know that is my next destination. So they'll go and they'll be ready in four measures to get those chimes mallets and be ready to play what they're going to be playing. Okay, and speaking of mallets, if you have any mallet or stick preferences, you could put that also under your percussion name staff. So if you want them to play something with brushes, for example, in the snare drum, um, you could write brushes and add that in as well. Uh, and maybe you're interested in pictograms. Maybe you don't like what I'm doing right now. So, for example, let's go to chimes and go to create percussion names. And I don't know if you noticed that there were a lot of different options when I was um, looking at the note heads. Now that note head, that font menu is actually a gigantic thing and trying to, uh, to get you there is going to be fun. Um, but if I go to create percussion name and I go to fonts or insert symbol, this has all the Times New Roman symbols in it, but we're not going to go to there. What we're going to go to is we're going to go to font. Get up here, look at our finale texts, and finale percussion is the font that we're going to look at. So we're going to have the finale percussion font. You're probably going to want to make it a little bit bigger. And as you, oops. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to go up to where I was before, my bad, and find that finale percussion. Oh, there's also mallets, so that might be helpful too, but mallets, percussion, find it, and you'll notice that it types in all sorts of fun symbols right there. And again, you might want to make them a bit bigger for people to see. And now with this, I'm going to do that, what I was doing before. Um, and again, you have all these options here. What I want to do is go to insert symbol now in percussion. And you'll notice that there's some blank spaces here at the bottom. But as we keep on going, here we go. Look at all of these options that I can put in as possibilities. You'll notice there's a pictogram for all sorts of interesting instruments. If you want to use pictures instead of words, here's a cowbell. Here's a maraca. There's a gong, there's a glockenspiel. Vibraphone is one of the ones we use in this piece. And you could solve that as a snare drum. There's a tambourine. There's some crash cymbals right there. Hi-hats, um, sleigh bells, triangle, and so on and so forth. There's some different mallet options that you have. Ah, there's our brushes that we want to use. Suspended cymbal, anvil, and just keep on going. There's even fun squiggly lines that you can use. Don't do this um, with a real gun. Make sure it's a percussion instrument. There's some antique symbol or cotales that you could be using. So you have so many options of pictures here that you might want to use. The beautiful vibra slap as well, accounted for and so forth. So go find what you want. Here's a mark tree. And when you find what you want, then you can just throw it into the score. Um, so again, I think we were looking for brushes, which is fine. Um, if you don't find one of these symbols, you could actually draw your own, which I've done several times before. Um, here's a brush, so I can get rid of all of these and maybe even make that a bit bigger so it's nicer to see. 
So here's a brush, and I can put that, and I could do something like this. Snare drum with my brush. And I could change the snare drum to a picture too, and just start labeling all these things in pictograms. And that's an alternative way to do what we were doing right there. And I think it's a real party there. And you'll notice this is use percussion names category fonts. And if you wanted to go back to your edit categories here, you could actually go here and change your default text font to be a finale percussion font that we are using right now. And you could do this with all of them. And holy cow, everything has become percussion Egyptian right here, right? All these hieroglyphics. Um, and with that, we can actually go and do what we were doing before and change all of these over, go to insert symbol, and go find the symbols that you desire to have in your music. So it's kind of fun to use all these symbols in this font. There's a snare drum looking thing. And um, what I would do probably for this is if you notice how small those are, I would probably change the font size to like 24 so that you can actually see these things. Okay, so anyway, this is looking like garbage right now, but you'd have to go and choose the exact things that you want from here. But you could communicate everything you desire to communicate using the percussion font right here, and that's a great idea. Now, like I said, if you don't have something that is there, and you're feeling creative, you can go into this shape designer and you can draw your own instrument right here. So, for example, I don't know if I saw chimes in there the way I wanted to see them, so maybe I could draw myself some chimes. This can be a very rough drawing. Sometimes I spend way too long doing this kind of thing. Um, but you know, I think of a chimes having something like this. And by the way, you can go to position up here and get exact places where all these things go. And then um, what I chose was one that just keeps going until it makes an intersection happen. So now I'm on a new one. And maybe I'm going to just give myself some chimes. Oh my goodness, this is ugly. And that is why you should take an art class. But if you want to make some chimes and make something look like this, you can see that this is becoming like garbage. Um, the other way we can do it is probably follow the way that we saw some of those other ones. And um, some of our keyboard instruments had something like this that was labeled with something on the inside. Uh, maybe we could do something that is like this, and then type in the middle of it, chimes, maybe find a font that's similar to the other ones. Anyway, um, that is one way you can deal with it. And again, if you take some time, you can make some really interesting drawings that way. OK, so that's all you need to know about percussion. Again, if you're going to do the percussion names thing, um, you can choose to do pictograms. You can choose to do text. Either way works fine. Um, the Text is actually quite useful, and I wouldn't discount that and go right to images, um, because if you do have these images, you're going to have to have a map that tells them all what all of these things mean, right? Some of them are self-explanatory, but some of them might be slightly confusing to them. All right, so that's all I have on percussion for now. If you have any questions, let me know, and I can make more videos in the comments if, if I get any comments on this. Thanks.